Deuteronomy, chapters 5 through 7. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, ye may learn them, and keep and do them. Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive today. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mountain in the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at this time, to show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire, and went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. Remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence from a mighty hand, and by the stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, neither shalt thou commit adultery, neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, or his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice, and he added no more. He wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near, and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, when ye spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of the people, which they have spoken unto thee, and they have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such a heart in them, that they would fear me, and keep my commandments always, that it might be well with them, and with their children forever. Go, say to them, Get you into your tents again. But as for thee, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments, and the statutes, and the judgments, which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye might live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. And that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. 
And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggedest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantedest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. And then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. And ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God, as ye tempted him at Massa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, as it was at this day. And it shall be our righteousness, if we observe to do all these commandments, before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. And thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out of a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which he was covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repayeth them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him, he will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I commanded thee to this day to do them. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which ye swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He also will bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks thy sheep, and the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you, or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods. 
for that will be a snare unto thee. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them, until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God, and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction, until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee, until thou have destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Psalm 64, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. With their tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret of the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him, and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, Who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them, and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow, and suddenly shall they be wounded. So that they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all men shall fear, and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord, and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 26 to 31. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. The Wisdom of Solomon, Chapter 16 Therefore, by the like were they punished worthily, and by the multitude of beasts tormented. Instead of which punishment, dealing graciously with thine own people, thou preparest for them meat of a strange taste, even quails to stir up their appetite. To the end that they, desiring food, might for the ugly sight of the beasts sent among them loathe even that, which they must needs desire. But these, suffering penury for a short space, might be made partakers of a strange taste. For it was requisite that upon them exercising tyranny should come penury, which they could not avoid. But to these it should only be showed how their enemies were tormented. For when the horrible fierceness of beasts came upon these, they perished with the stings of crooked serpents, thy wrath endured not for ever. But they were troubled for a small season, that they might be admonished, having a sign of salvation, to put them in remembrance of the commandment of thy law. For he that turned himself toward it was not saved by the thing that he saw, but by thee, that art the Savior of all. And in this thou madest thine enemies confess, that it is thou who deliverest from all evil. For them the bitings of grasshoppers and lies killed. Neither was there found any remedy for their life, for they were worthy to be punished by such. But thy sons, not the very teeth of eminent dragons, overcame. For the mercy was ever by them, and healed them. For they were pricked, that they should remember thy words, and were quickly saved, that not falling into deep forgetfulness, they might be continually mindful of thy goodness. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. For thou hast power of life and death, that leadest to the gates of hell, and bringest up again. A man indeed killeth through his malice, 
and the spirit, when it is gone forth, returneth not, neither the soul received up cometh again. But it is not possible to escape thine hand. For the ungodly did deny to know thee, were scourged by the strength of thine arm, with strange rains, hails, and showers, were they persecuted, they could not avoid, and through fire were they consumed. For just to be most wondered at, the fire had more force in the water that quencheth all things, for the world fighteth for the righteous. For some time the flame was mitigated, that might not burn up the beasts that were sent against the ungodly, but themselves might see and perceive that they were persecuted with the judgment of God. And at another time it burneth even the mist of the water above the power of fire, that it might destroy the fruits of an unjust land. Instead whereof thou fedest thine own people with angels as food, and didst send them from heaven bread prepared without their labor, able to content every man's delight, and agreeing to every taste. For thy sustenance declared thy sweetness unto thy children, and serving to the appetite of the eater, tempered itself to every man's liking. But snow and ice endured the fire, and melted not, that they might know that the fire burning in the hail, and the sparkling in the rain, did destroy the fruits of the enemies. But this again did even forget his own strength, that the righteous might be nourished. For the creature that serveth thee, who art the maker, increaseth his strength against the unrighteous for their punishment, and abateth his strength for the benefit of such as put their trust in thee. Therefore, even then was it altered into all fashions, and was obedient to thy grace, that nourisheth all things, according to the desire of them that had need. That thy children, O Lord, whom thou lovest, might know, that it is not the growing of fruits that nourisheth man, but that it is thy word which reserveth them that put their trust in thee. For that which was not destroyed in the fire, being worn with little sunbeam, soon melted away, that it might be known that we must prevent the sun to give thee thanks, and at the day spring pray unto thee. For the hope of the unthankful shall melt away as the winter's hoarfrost, and shall run away as unprofitable water.